It's hard for us to understand today what a really big deal Lafayette was. We all know the story of the young French nobleman who came to America to fight for freedom, our freedom. He was friends with George Washington, Alexander Hamilton, and Thomas Jefferson. You know what? Half a century later, he came back to America, and the country went wild. Some background. He had a long name. Marie-Joseph Paul-Yves Roche Gilbert du Motier de Lafayette. He once joked that he was christened with every saint his family could think of to give him more protection in battle, and he needed it. At an age when most today are college freshmen, Lafayette was leading troops, American troops, in battle. He was wounded doing so. Lafayette went back to his home country, and he raised money and urged military support for hours. He was the son George Washington never had. In fact, Lafayette named his own son after his old general. He could be as articulate as Jefferson when it came to explaining our American ideals. Here's a good quote. Liberty, Lafayette once said, consists in the freedom to do everything which injures no one else. Hence, the exercise of the natural rights of each man has no limits except those which assure to the other members of the society the enjoyment of the same rights. He loved America. He says so time and again. And America loved him back. They named so many things for him. In Georgia, Fayette County is named for him. In West Georgia, they named the city of LaGrange after his farm. He's one of only a handful of foreign nationals granted honorary U.S. citizenship. And we thought so much of him, we did it twice. After successfully helping our revolution, Lafayette, an aristocrat, went back to France and watched a similar uprising play out, more unsuccessfully. Through it all, he seemed to remain a voice of reason, articulating well freedom's value and the need to fight to gain it, while at the same time decrying the violence that sometimes takes place. Things did not go well. His lands were confiscated and he was put into prison, but he endured and he remained universally admired and still remembered in the 1820s when he returned to America. Lafayette's visit from 1824 to 1825 was one of the biggest events of the era. It began in July 1824 when the old general, then in his late 60s, began a visit that touched all of America. He visited every state in the Union at the time. There were 24. And in late March 1825, he came to Augusta. Everyone was excited. Storekeepers displayed all sorts of Lafayette gear, hats, portraits, souvenirs. An arch was constructed over Broad Street to greet him. A platform big enough to hold 600 diners was put up in front of the old courthouse on Green Street. Lafayette was not disappointed, but he was late. When the steamer Altima Hall rounded the sandbar of the Savannah River and everyone could see it, thousands of spectators rushed to the bank to greet Augusta's greatest visitor since George Washington. He was accompanied to the Planters Hotel and his lodgings. There he received the Augusta Frenchman and got to enjoy the Lagle's welcoming address in French. At noon, they took him to City Hall and he heard the mayor give a speech in English. At three, there was an outdoor banquet put on by the proprietor of the Globe Hotel. And then they had a ball here at the Planters Hotel. It was considered one of the most magnificent events in the city's history. Augusta historian Ed Cashin said that George Washington's visit to Augusta in the 1790s had set the bar and Lafayette's visit, three decades later, jumped over it. Somewhere in all of this, the legend says, a little boy named Lafayette got to sit on his namesake's lap. Little Lafayette McClaws would go on to attend West Point, become a Civil War general, 
and afterwards an official in the city of Savannah. Lafayette would visit other towns across America and then return to France, assured that he would be always remembered. And he is.